Good morning and welcome to another episode of Invad Entry. I say good morning, it may not be at the time this video going out. Oh, I've got my new cutback, by the way. Most, Not even the most egotistical thing I've ever done. Um, <laughs> today we're going to be looking at architecture of the uh, community bot that we've been building the last four or five episodes now. I do apologise, it is uh, before work this morning, so it's rush hour and there's some people driving some very loud motorbikes. The way right. Anyway, so what we have at the moment, we have a Discord bot, and this pen is not going to work, and that's just going to be fantastic. So we're going to swap to backup pen. Okay, we have a Discord bot, which is going to be running here, which is connecting to Discord. So it's getting webhook, it's actually connecting via webhook into Discord. So it's getting events in, and it's sending events back, uh, like send message and so on. What we're going to start building out is some microservices at the back end or one-off tasks. These could be batch tasks run by a cron job. These could be web hooks. They could be web pages which are being called. Um, and they're going to want to trigger things inside the disco bot. Uh, disco, Discord bot, not disco bots. Don't make that mistake. Oh, by the way, I'm on my hyperdelic shirt, which is a very nice stripy shirt. And usually when you do a video call with me, the resolution is high enough that you don't get this effect. But, but at this small resolution, it's really hypnotic. Like that. You see on the, this, the overhead camera, it's not a problem at all, but on this camera it's like, yay! Okay. I apologise. It's morning. Anyway, I want these things to communicate with, with each other, and originally I was thinking about running a web server. I have done that in the past, run a web server inside the di Discord bot, so these things could call the web server, but decided against that, and instead what I'm actually going to go for is I'm going to go for a Redis system in the middle. So Redis is like... Um, it's a key value store, it also allows you to do queues, it's like a multifunctional thing. So for a hobbyist, it's a great thing, so I don't need to run lots of things. I also have got a database, by the way. I've got my Maria database at the bottom. These are all probably going to be Django commands, but they don't have to be. But the idea is, I can do something over here, like I can do some kind of NFT check here, which is going to message the Redis, and this is going to pull out of the Redis. Uh, and I want to do this in a way which is efficient, and I don't really want to be hacking async workers. So I'm going to show you a, an easiest way to do this, um, which has some side effects, it has some flaws. For a high bandwidth system, we would actually redesign this. And I think, again, I may do a video in the future of how to design a high-performance Discord bot. Not many of us are going to need a high-performance one because the number of messages per minute is uh, less than the throughput of the bot, i.e. you can press it. Somebody needs a new exhaust, because that just sounds like an angry mosquito, which has gone horribly wrong. Anyway, uh, let's nip to code now. So this is the Discord bot where uh, we left it off um, pff, the other day. I don't know when. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to add into this. The first thing I'm going to want to do is I've already put my secrets for my Redis into uh, a file, into local settings. So they're already there. In fact, I put them in together. And the first thing I want to do is actually have a space to store my Redis. Uh, data um, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to make in the top of this file I'm going to make um, a thing called Redis. I'm just going to store it there. It's going to have an R value, that's going to be non. It's going to have a pub sub, that's going to be non. Okay, so in setup down here, I'm going to actually want to start setting up the Redis and make the Redis connection. So I'm just going to, I think I may have added some print lines in here. So by the way, those of you looking at the tabulate function, print commands actually is my is where I tabulate from the from the library of the day function. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do Redis um, r equals Redis oh, Redis dot Redis. Now this is going to take the host. It's going to take the port. It's going to take. Um, I've put a password on my Redis. We will come back by the way and secure this better in in, in a bit. Um, but I'll explain some of that architecture when we get round to it. It's going to take a password, and it's going to take uh, db equals naught for the moment. Just park it in. Right. So all these things are in the format of settings. I've imported settings already. So these are all going to be settings uh, dot redis. And because I put these as an object in my settings just to keep them together, it's going to be host. And I can just copy that and put that on the port and the password because obviously I use the same value for all three. I don't. This is going to be um, uh, port and this is going to be password. There we go. So that's going to connect to the Redis for me. It actually doesn't connect to the Redis at this point. It's lazy. Um, so what's going to happen is Redis pub 
sub, my pub sub object is going to be uh, redis r dot pub sub. So I did have that available for later. And I'm going to subscribe. Now, to begin with, I should actually put this in a setting as well because I'm actually going to share my Redis for um, uh, development and production, which you should never do. You should have separate environments. But again, we're at home, so I could, because it's dockerized, we'll look at a little copy. So I'm going to call it in, the queue I'm going to be interested in is invad bot poke. So that's there, that's running. Uh, if I run that command now, um, what we should see very quickly, uh, if I... I'm in the right VM. There we go. So it's connected to Redis. Nothing, nothing's errored. That's all nice and happy. See that tabulate function there showed you what commands have been loaded. Just shows very nicely, very quickly without me worrying about lining functions up. I can see all these things are very nice there. This might get a bit bad if I get very long uh, regexes in here, but this working quite well for me at the moment, so I, I do like tabulate. Okay, so that's worked nicely. Uh, the next thing we need to do now is actually make it actually start pulling messages from the queue. And I could try and hijack, because I've got an async thing really running that's managed by Discord. I don't really want to be doing in there. However, Discord actually comes with a function for repeating tasks, which is really quite handy. So what I want to do at the top here is, under Discord, is to import or from discord.x import tasks and tasks in discord are really powerful really cool things so what we can do here is ta task uh, stop loop uh, seconds equals 0.5 every half second no every uh, every five seconds because I don't need to be very quick at this async um, async def redis check now Excellent. So at this point, what we should be able to do is do message equals uh, redis pub sub, which is that pub sub dot get messages, get message, while message is not equal to none. If there's two messages in the queue, I don't want to wait another five seconds because I can put items on the queue faster than every five seconds. So message equals redis pub sub dot get message. So that's just going to clear the queue out really quickly. Again, there's a potential DOS attack here where you could fill the queue up and therefore I'm going to stop responding to events. Uh, again, thinking about realistic of, of this is nice, easy code for to begin with, and we can come back and optimize this later on. Build your code um, to be working first. I will talk about some security. Um, uh, message. Message. Now, uh, the reason I put a little try in here is because I want the message to be dealt with. What we should really try and do is do await uh, client dot fetch user and then a user ID. Now, one of the challenges here is you can't do a Dan San uh, hash, whatever my number is, uh, because that doesn't that doesn't actually work. You actually need to know the numerical IDs of the user, and I believe the user has to talk to you before. So you have to know what that actually is, and it's a quite a long number. Um, so there's an issue with that. So, you, so you'd have to have stored those on your database on a previous time round. Um, and then once you have that, you could do user equals this, and then user dot send or await hello. And that would send the user a message. Um, now, uh, I guess I guess my user IDs are going to be published at some point. So that's my user ID in there. So what we're actually going to do is grab that user and actually we're going to put that message in in the actual send. So it's going to send the message on the queue. So the moment there there is a bit of security in the Redis queue in that there's a password on the actual Redis, but there's no signing of the item, there's no sign of the token. The idea is to try and decouple the sending logic from the outbound logic so that the sending logic basically, if I go back to my my thing here, this system fire and forgets into the Redis queue. It sends like a task into the Redis queue, which this thing picks off. It knows it's going to Discord on the, ba on the basis that it's adding it to the queue of uh, uh, in invalid entry bot poke. So it's going to say poke bot. And really, what it needs to have in here is a bit more message, which has like like a JSON block, which has a, a type, and it's going to message who, 
and it's got an object IDs and it's got information about how to process that message. So we're going to be building that object out in future. This is just to prove the technology of the Redis. Uh, with all that in place, I'm going to uh, switch back to my view. Call that, run it again. And what you notice though is that actually uh, there is one thing I forgot. One thing I forgot, and I'm just going to cancel that. This isn't running. Okay. It's a bit of a weird one that if you do these tasks, if you do these client events, they start automatically. This hasn't actually run. And what you have to do is an extra line of code here, which is that function name. In fact, I'm going to put it after the runtime. Redis check dot start. Now, it seems weird that you're trying Redis check, which is a function. It's because it's not really this function anymore. It's being decorated by the task. There's other things you can do. You can actually do before loop and after loop as well. And you can put counter saying only run this five times, for example. But it, And it's quite interesting you can do this because it basically means you could do like try something five times, but you could start that trying it five times on the back of an event. So you don't have to do it on startup. You can actually start this loop whenever based on the command. You can stop it based on the command, um, which is quite an interesting basis. So I can actually make a task to start and stop the async worker. Uh, and get maybe get statistics from the queue. So you can do more advanced things than just start it, but if maybe you want to do a, a health check every five seconds, you could check when you're connected every five seconds, deal with those situations where you're not. So I run this now, what should be happening is every five seconds, that's going to check the queue. So we need to now push something onto the queue. Um, and I will do that now. just checking I didn't have a password on my screen. So this is uh, a Jupyter notebook where I'm importing res, I'm importing my host and password here, so I'm not printing them off over. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to connect to Redis, and we're gonna just put some test data in the value just to make sure I've got a good Redis. This is the normal key value store Redis sort of functionality. So we're gonna connect to that. I'm gonna put five items on the queue. Check my Discord is actually open here, uh, and he is. and run that five times. And what's gonna happen is, hopefully, yeah, here you see, I'm beginning to get messages coming in one by one on this queue. Now, I will point out at this point that I'm talking on Jmon, not Jmons, and not in Vidantia, because it's my dev bot rather than my actual production bot. This bot goes down every time I disconnect. They can say, but I'm able to queue once, however many time I like, um, I can actually publish more messages in there. Um, and it comes up in here, a few seconds later. You will notice there's some extra data in here. There's things like the actual, um, which channel it came in from. Because you subscribe to a PubSub object, you could listen to multiple channels, and therefore you need, may need to know which channels come in from. These are binaries, you have to convert those back into your um, your strings. But that's it, that is, in effect, the entire um, framework for being able to asynchronously do something in an outside task, and then send it to the, the Discord bot for processing. Um, so I'm going to evolve this a little bit more in terms of the the content of this message. This message is going to be a JSON object, which is probably going to be signed, I think. Um, but it's going to allow me to actually trigger events. You can use the same trick also with Pi Games. So we would probably have the big screen frame, which is currently turned off at the moment, where we can send events either from Discord um, or from uh, the, the the individual microservices, cron jobs, whatever, into um, the big screen or vice versa. So you could put a message and have it appear on the big screen. I'm going to start tying those things together as, as completely separate processes which are decoupled except via a known interface. And this is the interface, is what's in this JSON becomes that interface, that object interface. So that's it for today. If you're enjoying this series, please hit like, please hit subscribe and let me know in the comments if there's anything you want to see or any, any bit of, you want to talk about more. Um, I will be redesigning the wallet login uh, system uh, because I realized when I said, oh, there's no security hole, there's no, there's no gain to someone giving me a false wallet. There is a gain to that. So I will be designing that and that will also involve this Redis function as well, I think. Uh, so this is a nice little bit of framework, it's a nice bit of utility work. Uh, and that is all that I've got for today. So thank you very much.